Hey guys, Mark here for Cards to Yards via Woodlands Online and Adventure Stadium here for the TriStar Show at NRG Arena. It's going to be an awesome time. We're going to go in uh, this cast of Sandlots here. We're going to try to get some interviews. We're going to check in with JT and Lou at the Adventure Stadium booth. And we're going to walk around and just look at all the cards and memorabilia and all the cool stuff inside. That's this episode of Cards to Yards. First, I'm with TriStar. I am the Senior VP of Operations. So this is the 37th annual event, and we produce these sports collectible events across the country. And this particular event in Houston, we've been doing for a number of years, obviously. And we have exhibitors who come in from across the country and have everything from vintage trading cards to the brand new trading cards that are out, just released, uh, to autograph memorabilia, to you name it in the world of sports and entertainment. And we have it here. We have an incredible array of exhibitors, who some of which have been doing these shows since we started doing them. So it's incredible. And then in addition to that, we have our autograph lineup, which uh, features 30 to 40 at every event, celebrities of, of all kinds. This weekend, we've got the Sandlot cast is celebrating their 30th anniversary of the movie. Uh, we've got Julius Irving here today, Damian Pierce from the Texans. Tomorrow, we're having a big celebration of the Astros World Series win with Ryan Presley, Chaz McCormick, David Hensley, and more. And uh, got many, many others coming. We've got three of the Rockets coming tomorrow, Jalen Green, Opera and Shingoon, uh, and it, we just, it's a big, big lineup, and we love doing this event every February here at NRG. So, you know, with the diverse autograph lineup that we have at this event, with celebrities of the past and present and future, um, really what we see is we're seeing a lot of kids here this weekend, which is super, super exciting. Uh, I think the Sandlot cast, I think, brings that out. I know that with these current Astros and current Rockets that are here tomorrow, we're fully expecting that as well. But it's very, very exciting to us to see the youth and, and really see the, the number of kids who are here, not only with the celebrities, but also just enjoying the trading cards. And I think that has really been something that we've seen a resurgence in and really an increase in since the start of the pandemic, which is just wonderful for our industry and for collectibles as a whole. Hey guys, welcome to a very special edition of Cards to Yards. We, uh, courtesy of Woodlands Online and the Adventure Stadium, are coming to you from NRG Arena in Houston, Texas for the TriStar Show, and I'm with Lou. What's up? What's up? How's you're, it going? You're my favorite co-host. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> I'll tell everyone. I appreciate That's it. Fine. I, won't say that. I won't say nothing. So, hey, how's the show been going for y'all so far? Uh, the show's been actually really, really good. Um, big turnout. Not as crowded as most, I mean, but that's good, though, because give some people to work and move around, and we're not, like, kind of trying to, oh, sorry, bumping into people with valuable cards. So mm. uh, other than that, I mean, it's – have you taken a walk yet? Oh, this yeah. beautiful around here. There's so many different varieties, different things from memorabilia to cards to uh, even some jewelry from actors and players, autographs. I mean, it, 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 everything is here. I love it. I saw – your neighbors a couple rows down have a Coca-Cola tour poster signed by Selena. It's a little bit pricey. No way. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I haven't seen that yet. That's the most crazy thing I've seen on the floor so far. Well, uh, I've been going to TriStar shows since I was 14 because I'm from Houston. Yeah. By far the most crowded this one has been. Yeah, I, the last like, one I came to was two years ago. It wasn't this crowded. As far as dealer tables. like yeah. They sold it out wall to wall. Yeah, they, they have. They have, and it's a lot bigger than what we expected it was going to be yeah. uh, next year. I mean, this is our first time here this year or for the stadium, and I'm pretty sure next year uh, I would not be surprised if we go with double the amount of space that we have here this year. Absolutely. Uh, it's just a little field test for this year, and, and, and going forward we're going to gradually get bigger, and next thing you know we'll probably take a whole wall. And y'all have, <laughs> y'all. I'm biased, obviously, but y'all have a very good selection of wax. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. I, I, tried, I tried my best. Yeah. But uh, it's been good. Yeah, and uh, we're, you know, kind of winding down on a Saturday, but y'all have been busy all day. Yes, yes. Uh, it has been 
consistently busy from 10 all the way when they open the doors to right now, which is good. I mean, not only does it make the time go by quickly, but it shows that we're doing something right. We have a lot of people coming up here uh, doing different types of, um, what are they called, uh, when they come with a buy-up challenge. Like a yeah. lot of these kids are coming up here with buy-up challenges, and I'm trying to help out as much as I can. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's just a little hard to, to do that with everybody crowding around the tables. But yeah. um, Is that what's going on? Because I'm, I'm from the MySpace area, if we're being honest, like era, if we're being honest, so way before TikTok. The only TikTok I had was a clock that looks like a cat goes back and forth. <laughs> but so is that what's going on? Yeah, so they're what's doing the a buyout challenge. The, buy, the buy buyout challenge, inventory? right? So like, preferably it's kids. Right. Some adults, some teenagers. Mm -hmm. They come in. They start the the day with like a dollar. Okay. A dollar card, and by the end of the day, they're trying to have like a two or three hundred. They're trying to see how far up they can get. Oh, like an up cycle. Yeah. Okay. So they're trading one card to try to get another card and try to move up. In value. So I always call that red paperclip because there was a story of a kid who had a paperclip and he ended up trading up and up and up through flea markets and Craigslist ended up and having a house or a car or something, house. right? Probably not a nice house. Yeah, but it probably took him a long time to do that one. Paperclip to a house. It's a little so. bit easier with cards. You know, you find the right person to, or the right collector and that person is looking for that card. It's easier. It's easier to go up real yeah. quick. You can go. There was one gentleman that or one kid that started with a dollar. And he started at 10 o'clock this morning, and at 1 o'clock I seen him, and he had a stack. And he goes, I started at a dollar, check it out. And I That's swear hustle. he probably had about four to $500 worth of value in there. These kids out here can hustle. They do. And yeah. a, a lot of people say that uh, with how it boomed, that it could be bad for the hobby. Yes and no. Sure. Yes, because, I mean, you know, things get expensive. Yeah, from what we believe it used to be to now, but it's teaching our kids and the future of this hobby, how to be entrepreneurs, how to value things, how to trade, how to bargain. Uh, that is something they don't even teach in school, which I appreciate the most, the most. And whenever I see kids over there, I try to help them out the most. I try to also teach them as well and go forward from there. So I think it's really, really good for the hobby. Yeah. I mean, like you said, generates interest. You got a fan for life. And uh, just I, I like the aspect of, of trading because, well, well, for one, I'm always complimenting you guys for having trade night yeah. and trying to instill like a community uh, up at the top of um, you know Venture Begins and the stadium up there. Uh, so I think it's overall good for the hobby. Um, yeah, I mean we have to keep this hobby momentum going because after us is them and after them is them. So we really want to pass down what we love about it down to these kids so they can pass it down to their kids and it keeps on going. So this hobby never dies. And to be frank, during the COVID boom, a lot of people jumped in that jumped out pretty yes, quick. Yes, they did. But, but if you got those kids who actually do it as a passion, then uh, you're going to have, you know, collectors for life. So yes, that, and that's what we want. That's what we ultimately we want. And Definitely. Then who's hot? Who are people asking for? We're gearing up for the Super Bowl. Oh, we of got course, gearing up. Everybody's looking, for, up. everybody's looking for Kansas City. Everybody's, yeah. But they know Mahomes rookies and Mahomes big cards are going for sometimes six figures high, uh, five figures, yeah. you know, uh, right now. So people are definitely going after, like, Devontae. Uh, they're going after A.J. Brown, Jalen Hurts, all yeah. a lot of Eagles that really haven't won a Super Bowl yet. So their prices aren't really up there, but they're starting to creep as we get closer to the Super Bowl. So that's, of course, hot for football. A lot of people are taking advantage of uh, grabbing some of these big quarterbacks that are looking good for next year, such next as Trevor year, yeah. Lawrence, Justin Fields, especially them. You know, we spoke about it with the number one pick and all that salary room. Uh, there are a lot of people are gunning for Justin Fields, uh, Herbert, big arm. You know, now they got Kel uh, Kellen Moore, right? Kellen Moore, mm -hmm. offensive coordinator from Dallas over there. Hopefully he can, you know, sling the ball a little bit better with that offensive play calling over there. So a lot of a lot of those players are getting, you know, kind of picked and plucked around here. Um, baseball is cranking up a little bit spring training around yeah, the corner um, but yeah. the draft is still hot so oh, a lot yeah. of your prospect hunting um i i think that's i think that's about what i've seen i didn't know that maybe since the nhl all-star games this weekend maybe a little bit of interest, little bit of but, hockey but the texas isn't a hockey hotbed no it's you not know, uh, a lot of astros and then nba all-stars were just announced so yes oh man and that, then, that was that's crazy yeah. uh, some people got definitely uh, in the nicest word, uh, screwed. Sure. <laughs> there, there, there's, a, there's a few snubs but, in but, there. But there's gonna, it's going to happen. It happens every year. And, and, and it's not the NBA or any all-star, any league that 
snubs them. It's us. We're the people that pick and pluck and vote for the players. So, sure. hey, we can't blame nobody but us. We're it, the ones that vote. Uh, a couple of big news items have happened. One, the Texans have a coach, D'Amico Ryan. So I don't know if that's generated any more buzz for Texans. When you mentioned top tier quarterbacks, I, I was just certain you were going to mention Davis Mills. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, also, but also, you know, just D'Amico Ryan's RPA, stuff like that. I would think that hometown guy coming back, a lot of excitement for that. Probably on the defensive side more so. And then the other big uh, bomb in the news was... Hold on, real quick. Can we stop right there, yeah, D'Amico, real quick? Yes. All right, about D'Amico. Look, I'm really excited about D'Amico coming to mm-hmm. Texans, right? Drafted by the Texans. He knows the Texans' philosophy. He, he, he has that, that power to change a, a, a defense and a team overall. I do like the move. Uh, the best move about that is I like the six-year contract that he got because he knows it's not going to happen in the first year. It's probably not going to happen in the second year. You have to give this man at least three years, a good three years to turn the momentum around here to, to make this a good football town again. Uh, and, and with giving him six years, that gives him more than enough time because – the last three years we've been through, I mean, Texans have been through, what, four or five coaches in three years? in three years, yeah. You know, we, we and, and he talent, doesn't want yeah. that. He wants a fair shot, and I think the six years is great and more than enough time to show that you could turn around a good football or a football team of this caliber. Now, speaking of Davis Mills, I mean, I still <laughs> like him. Hopefully something can change, but I don't know. They, the, the, the Texans have the opportunity to grab one of the top quarterbacks or – go ahead and trade down and try to solidify some of that offensive line and some of that defensive line through the draft. So you're saying Aaron Rodgers is probably not looking at real no. estate in the Woodlands? No. No. <laughs> I don't know if I would want it's, – it's so dramatic. Speaking, Aaron speak, Rodgers is a rental right now. Speaking of dramatic jumping sports, Kyrie Irving once again oh puts in God. for a trade request. Are you tired of that? Drama queen. Yeah, I, didn't tired. I tell you last time I said yes. I do not have no respect for Kyrie or the Nets or Dem- Kevin Durant because of the fact that they're turning in this into a, a, like a soap opera. I mean, it's just so dramatic. And, oh, my gosh, like, come on, man. Play ball. Do what you're, do, and do what you're supposed to do and win championships. That's all. That's all people are asking for. Nobody's asking for your two cents. Nobody's asking for none of that stuff. Donate I, when you want to. but I, Absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll catch up more on the news yeah, end with those couple of things. Uh, one cool thing about TriStar, they also have an autograph alley back there yes. where you can meet and greet. Uh, they got some, some of the Rockets, some of the Astros here. Tomorrow's uh, a lot tomorrow, of Astros. For sure. Jalen uh, Green. But it's also the 30th anniversary of one of everyone's favorite baseball movies, The Sandlot. Oh, yes. I was able to get some interviews with some of them so let's check those out hey guys mark here on the floor for woodlands online and adventure stadium at the big adventure begins for the tri-star show here in 2023 at the nrg uh i'm here with squints yes chauncey leopardi i'm interviewing uh brandon adams we are with uh shane obizinski right. did i get it right you did you did it's a tough name but i, I appreciate it and uh it could have been worse the trick is to leave out the D. Okay. So yeah, you say without the D, Obazinski, you got it. I'm with uh, Marty York, who played uh, Sean McLennan. Yes, yeah, yeah. What's up, guys? How you doing? I am with Patrick Renna, also known as Hamilton Ham Porter from Sandlot. And so obviously, people are here because of Sandlot 30th anniversary. Yes, sir. Uh, you played repeat. Yes, sir. Oh, now why do you think this film still resonates after 30 years? We've been very lucky to have the generations, the fathers, the, you know, the parents that pass it down to their, their kids and they pass it down to theirs. And I was, a gentleman asked me earlier how, almost a similar question, and we kind of feel it's just, it's, it's America. It's a very great American movie. It, it, baseball is what it's about, kind of, but it, it displays everything that America is good for. Fourth of July, friendship, summer, it's... Everyone can relate to it in some way, and that's that's what makes so, make us so lucky to keep it around. No, I just think it's a it's a timeless film. It was a timeless part of America, and uh, it was the innocence of youth. Um, you know, it, it's not like today where you know you can't cuss or say like a lot of the things like we did. What we acted like kids, and I was like that resonates with people. And it's uh, back before a time before cell phones and computers, when kids could just go out and play out in the street until the sun went down and then they went home and started again the next day. I just think the, the camaraderie again, you know, amongst the friends and, and it's just a good coming of age story, man, for everybody, I think. It's a, g- a good American story, you know? Uh, do you mind when people call you your character's name? No, I actually go by Squints. 
And I just want to say big shout out to everyone who wears glasses because like yeah. your character resonates with me for some reason awesome. that I don't know. You know. Um, it's really interesting. It's it, it's cool that three generations later, um, multiple generations keep showing it to their children, and there's a response to it. I think that being a '90s sports film, uh, David Mickey Evans, the director, says that. Uh, because it was set in the 60s, mm. and he gave it a really like Kodak, uh, they call it chromatic type of uh, film that it looks like. It has right. a certain coloring to it that it seems timeless. It's something that is just uh, like a piece of Americana. Like it, it brings you back to that, that 50s, 60s time, the golden age in America where, where you know it's very comforting to see these kids all mismatched and you know and and just uh having a good time and and being about you know friendship and values so i, I think that that's what carries on and, and people can still respond to you know um and it's just one of those feel good movies like whenever i need to feel good i'll put it on sandlot and then whenever i want to feel bad i'll put it on one of your other movies my girl because that's the saddest movie of all time uh yeah the, the ending for my girl is uh great to work on that film with macaulay but the ending is a tearjerker so did, did you know about the ending, or did you like learn about that during I the first time you saw it? I learned about it the same way as everybody else. When oh. I saw the movie, and then saw what happened, and uh, then I'm crying, you know? Did it also instill a fear of bees and allergies into you like it did to me? It didn't, but uh, I don't know. I'm glad I, I'm glad I don't have that problem. But for happier times, put on Sandlot uh, here at TriStar. They're here for the 30th anniversary. You guys are so wonderful, by the way. Just the, yeah. We were happy to be here, man. We're very... We're very lucky to be a part of this and to have the, the love and support from everyone about this film, so it's a pleasure. Well, you have a great time here in Thank Houston, you. and uh, enjoy the crowd here at TriStar. Thank you. And being here at TriStar, which is known for being a collectible show, is there anything you collect or geek out on? Uh, you know, I kind of do collect comic books a little bit. I, got, I have a little bit of a collection for comic books. I do have baseball cards at home that... Uh, I don't even know what they are. <laughs> like, I I'm sure I have like maybe one or two good ones, but uh, probably comic books, yeah. Also, shout out to you. You've also been on two of my other favorite things, Boy Meets World and yes. the Eric Andre Show. Yeah, Eric Andre Show. I never get that one. <laughs> hey, uh, that's one. That was by far the weirdest show I ever did. I don't know if the uh, I don't know if the age group lines up for Eric Andre Show and Sandlot, yeah. but yeah. but uh, I'm I'm the right age for Eric Andre now, so. Yeah. Uh, Marty, thanks so much, yeah. and have a good time here in Houston. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for coming down. Uh, so, you know, something interesting I found out that maybe no one will point out to you today. Okay. Uh, why were so many actors on The Sandlot also on Bit Roll as on Boy Meets World? Ah, I wasn't expecting that question. I don't know, man. I guess we just, you know, it was, it was the time. That was the show that was popular, and we were just lucky enough to, to get casted. Yeah, and I, I, I assume Sandlot like blew up most people's careers, right? As absolutely. far as yeah, absolutely. And um, and as it, it, it took a minute. The the film grew gradually over the years, you know. But um, yeah, that was that was the breakout for a lot of us. What do you think still resonates with people about that film thirty years later? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you're in another series of sports movies. Mighty Ducks, one and two. What was that like? That was great, too, man. Uh, me and Mike Vitar, as a matter of fact. And um, that was fun, man. That was fun. I was lucky to be a part of both movies. Yeah. Sometimes if I'm in a really busy situation like the grocery store, I'll try the Flying V, but it's just me, and I usually fall down. But, hey, appreciate your time. Enjoy Houston. Uh, grocery carts. <laughs> Absolutely. I could do it with that. Uh, thank you so much, Brandon, for your time. Enjoy Houston and TriStar. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. It was very free flowing, and you came home when you got home. So, uh, yeah, it's a shame that they they don't have the same life. You know, um, obviously, there's cool things about technology, but definitely the world has changed a bit. Yeah, absolutely. But baseball will be forever, so Sandlot will be forever as well. Uh, so Sandlot, obviously, a big commercial success, but a cult hit as well, just because so many it resonates with so many people. You were in another cult hit. Freaks and Geeks yes. uh, as Alan White, and that's one of my favorites. So just a big shout out to uh, Freaks and Geeks. Yeah, it was a great show. Uh, everybody in that show is a star. You know, it was a it was a great time working with all those talented people. I'm a, it's a shame we didn't get to do more of them, but uh, it was kind of part of the, the caught up in the Hollywood uh, move around of things. You know. 
Right. Uh, and then one last question. What do you collect? We're at TriStar, which is known for collectibles and cards. Is there anything you geek out on or collect? Um, children. No. <laughs> I, got, I, I got like four. I got four kids. Uh, I have a newborn and then a four and a six-year-old. You know, I'm not a big collector, um, but, uh, you know, people do give me things like Sandlot memorabilia, and I do keep the ones that are like, you know, a lot of artists and different things. They, they give me like hand-done stuff. So I collect that for my kids, and, and I'll, I'll save that for them for that time. You know? Excellent. Well, thanks for your time, Chauncey, and enjoy Houston and the TriStar Show. Thank you. Hey, welcome back. Cards to Yards. We're on the floor of NRG at the TriStar Show. I've got Lou with me. Um, so you had mentioned this TikTok challenge, this upcycle challenge with kids. Yep. I don't have enough stamina for that, but, but, <laughs> but here's what I thought about. We're going to do a scavenger hunt. So here's some rules. Okay. Uh, All this, right. So you can tell me kind of what to do, uh, and I'm going to go on this massive floor dealer to dealer All right. and find these things. All right. So the yeah. rules, the rules for uh, our scavenger hunt for you today. Yeah. Uh, will be uh, $20 in a 20-minute time limit because we know you don't have the stamina for an all-day event here. That, that's right? correct. So we're going to give you 20 minutes to go out there with $20. No more than two items from one dealer and must purchase from at least three dealers. Okay. Cards do not count twice. Star yeah. Wars cards, that is also numbered. Pick one category that the card represents. Right. All right? Now, it has to be numbered. Uh, it has to be a card of a current... What is that? Current NHL or NBA? Or no. Current NHL or NBA All Star, yeah. Okay, and we'll go. Yeah, we'll go with that. It has to be numbered. The big key thing is that to be numbered. You got twenty minutes. Yeah. And twenty dollars. Do you think you're down for this? I'm down, man. So five different cards: one uh, of a current NHL or NBA All Star, two a vintage card, trading card before 1980. For all you kids out there, there was cards before 1980. <laughs> there was there was cards before 2018. Um, a card for my PC, personal collection. Card number to fifth, uh, just a serial number card. And then a non-sports card, and you and I like to talk about Marvel and Star Wars, so okay, something from that realm. And uh, I'll try it. I'll go for it. I think I, a, I believe in you. I think you got this. It's a the only part I'm worried about is the walking, not so much the gawking. I'm great at looking at cards all day. Just don't just don't trip. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I'm ready? gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for it. I'm going. Set. Go. Hey, let's go check out another interview. Hey guys, Mark back here on the floor at the TriStar Show, courtesy of Woodlands Online and Adventure Stadium. I am with Patrick Renna, also known as Hamilton Ham Porter from Sandlot. That's right, that's right. That was well done. You had a mouthful there. You got it, you got it all out. <laughs> uh, so it's been 30 years. What do you think still resonates uh, with this movie for people? Um, I think it's, uh, you know, it's just... A different era, a different time when people got out more and got, you know, got in a little bit of trouble. Not too much, but a little bit. And uh, I think uh, it's just all about friendship and inclusion and things like that. So, you know, and baseball. Come on. American pastime, you know. 
Absolutely. And uh, you're in another uh, TV show about a ragtag group of individuals and a favorite American pastime in GLOW. You're in two episodes of that. I wish that show was still around. I know. Me too. That was a good time. It, uh, it was just me and the ladies, you know? It was great. I got me and the boys in this one and me and the ladies in that one. It was great. Perfect. And then one quick uh, final question. What do you collect? We're at a TriStar show where people collect autographs, jerseys, uh, whatnot. Is there anything you collect or geek out on? I haven't started, but kind of you come to a couple of these and you start. You kind of want to start. So we'll see. Maybe I'll start with the Babe Ruth uh, baseball. That would be a good start. You loan me a million bucks? <laughs> and- no, we'll see. Uh, I don't don't know what the ATM limit is here, but thanks for your time, Patrick, and enjoy Houston in the show. Thanks, Hey guys, uh, Mark back here at the Adventure Stadium booth. Now I'm back with JT. How's it going? It's going well. It's yeah. been a uh, very busy day. About what, a busy full day. What's uh, what sold the most for y'all? Just hop, hobby. I mean, baseball did extremely well. Yeah. Um, football was probably the most asked about, but again, with everything coming out right now, it gets bought up so quick anyway at the store that like you know we didn't have a lot to bring. Um, tons of slab singles, all rookies. Everyone's asking for Eagles, obviously, and Chiefs. So yeah, it's been a good mix. No, no Davis Mo rookies. We have one up there, but I don't think the Texas it's fans not, are too not hot right now. It. Okay, yeah. I already took a shot at them during Lou's segment, but I did yeah, it again anyway. There it is. But D'Amico Ryan's is the coach. I'm all on board for he it. Is. So yep. hey, see, you actually, unlike some of the other Venture Begins people, you accept the existence of hockey. I do, so, very much so. What do you think about the All-Star Weekend festivities? Uh, any players surprising you so far this year? Um, the best thing about All-Star so far was OV out there with his son, Sergey, yeah, yeah. on the goal last night. I mean, that was high octane. Very cool. Plus, you always love a good family story, so that was really cool. I'm a Rangers fan, so we're hopefully we might make a couple moves here. Yeah. Might overpay a little bit, but break up into that. Boston's just so good that it's going to be tough for uh, New York to make a play. But hopefully, it's been an entertaining game season so far. Yeah, We'll see how uh, it shapes up post-All-Star uh, break. And Connor McDavid very much securing his spot atop yeah. both the hobby and the NHL. Yeah, and, 100%. But, but also good for Jack Hughes for because a lot of people wrote him off his first year as a bust, and he's playing fantastic. He's busting it, yeah. yeah so. I like him. I, I like Jack Hughes. I like watching him uh, – beforehand too he was drafted and uh, yeah he'll be all right it's um, a little first year over exaggeration but we're gonna uh, wrap things up here so yeah i started out with 20 bucks i had to get five cards we had five different specific categories okay. i couldn't use one card for multiple categories i could not buy more than two cards from a dealer ensuring that i would go to three dealers okay uh so i ended with five bucks so these cards down here are uh we'll have pictures of those but these cards down here are the five so okay. for my serial number card i got a steven steven strasberg from tops strasberg yeah, yeah yeah so that was uh one of the green foil board parallels yeah i like the okay. board. in addition to that from the same dealer speaking of nhl oh, there he is for the category of NHL all-star or nba all-star connor like mcdavid that. that's from this year's upper deck that's just the base Card before 1980, uh, you probably didn't even know those exist, did you? But no. Card before 1980, 1966. This is my wild card a little the bit, Adam's but family. Adam's Family. Yeah, that's I love like, I love Wednesday on Netflix. So 1966, yeah, Don Russ, Adam's Family. One. And then for the PC, I collect Alan and Ginter, so a Pudge Rodriguez. 
He's here. Jersey from, uh, yeah, he is here. Yeah. Uh, from 2021, Alan and Ginter. And then for Marvel or Star Wars non sorts another vintage car, but I'm putting that in the Marvel category. That, that one is a sick. Ghost yeah. Rider 1976 top sticker. I like that so, one a lot. You have to show Michaela that one when you so, get back. So those total uh, 15, uh, and just I made it with one second to spare. 1959 on the clock. 19, who was timing you? Me. Oh, okay. Well. It may have been fudged. It may have been fudged. <laughs> you, know, you know, we're hockey fans, so you got to go with the plus minus. That's true. Plus and we minus. can cut out everything I said. They'll never know. Uh, uh, sure. Yeah. How, how, how sure do you think happen. I did? Uh, really well. I it, like Shawsburg. One is a nice parallel. Connor yeah. McDavid getting that is solid. The Ghost Rider, I love. Yeah. Just the vintage Adams family is phenomenal. I don't even know if you really consider it vintage from the 80s, but... Well, no, that's from 66. 60, okay, yeah, 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 100%. Before the 80s, yeah. You can go get this autographed right now, the Pudge. I probably could. What, does why, he why, sign, why shouldn't you? I, I, bet, I bet he charges to put Pudge on it. Probably. Probably. Yeah, I was probably. Saying. But, I mean, I thought you did very well. And getting that, you have the chance to go get it on card signed right there and verify Absolutely, and hilarious, easy rider reference on this card because he's saying, "Watch out, Peter Fonda." Yeah. So being cool. a being a man of popular culture, uh, awesome. So yeah, I mean, it's daunting, but that's one of the fun things to do is walk around and buy singles from people, as I'm sure you guys appreciate when oh, people actually stop by and look at your stuff. Yep. Uh, but y'all are having a good time out here. Uh, good luck tomorrow in finishing up the show. Oh and yeah. And thanks for your time, it. as always, for. Of Lou, JT, and Mark. This has been Cards the Yards, live from NRG via Woodlands Online and Adventure Stadium. We'll see you next time on Cards the Yards.